Well, good morning. I'm trying to dodge Pat here, but he's got such a long lens on that thing. Your picture will be on the web somewhere before this is over. I hate to tell you that. I'd like to welcome you here this morning. Uh, this is a, a regular meeting of the Future Economy Council. And I'm not sure whether any of you are familiar with that other than the people that uh, are members of the Future Economy Council. But uh, this is a think tank that's sponsored by the Chamber. And we've been meeting now for, I guess, almost two years. And we've been discussing things, uh, the economy for the most part, but looking at, uh, at the way we've been doing things. And not, and not saying that we've been doing things wrong in the past or anything like that, but just the conditions and the world has changed. And we need to change. And we've been looking at, you know, what changes do we need to make in Catawba County in this area to make our area more resilient. And part of being able to have those discussions is also to be able to have the facts. And that's why we're here this morning. Uh, we have a presentation this morning, and some of you have seen uh, this presentation in the past with older data. And it's just some very good data that we have uh, from the census and from a number of other sources. Uh, and this is Taylor Dellinger. Uh, Taylor and I have uh, worked together for I don't know how many years. I don't want to admit it. He's not as old as I am. I started working with Taylor when he first came to the COG, and I was with the school system. Uh, but I have tremendous respect for this man because the data that he pulls, he pulls from sources all over. And he puts it together in meaningful ways. And, and that's the reason we're, uh, we're honored to have him this morning, so that we can have those facts, so that whenever we have the questions that people ask about our economy, that we know exactly what the facts are about that. And so I'm not going to take much time, uh, more time. I, I want to give Taylor all the time that he can have this morning uh, because he's got a great presentation, and I think you'll probably have some questions for him at the end. So with that, uh, Taylor, I'm going to turn it over to you. And, uh, all right. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. The pressure is on me. I'm all by myself up here. But, uh, but thank you for coming out. Uh, I hope this will be informative. Uh, we're going to tell it like it is. Uh, some of the numbers are okay. Some of them are not so good, but the information needs to get out there. You're right. I am going to be uh, all over the web after this, aren't I? <laughs> the photographer is going crazy back there. So. It puts the extra pressure on, but uh, we're going to go ahead and get started here. Why does the census matter? And why am I here today? Well, the basis of the census is that it's actually a requirement. The U.S. Constitution requires a census be conducted every 10 years, and they use that for representative proportion uh, throughout the 50 states. Uh, that information actually came to the president around January 1st of this year. Uh, the redistricting process is underway in this state, also even within some of our local governments with uh, Hickory and Longview and Hickory Schools, uh, but it's a constitutional requirement. $400 billion of federal and state funding is related to the census. So there's a lot of money at stake. That's another reason why it's important to pay attention to the numbers and what they tell us. Uh, government agencies use the census to plan for future services or to locate new services. So we've given this information to the uh, Greenways Transit, for instance. They'll use it in their future planning process. Uh, we've given a presentation to the planners so they can think about where does this need to go, where does that need to go. And we've gotten already several dozen requests to go out to the public, give the information, or requests that come into our offices. We handle about 650 requests for all types of information. Uh, when the census information came out, I probably had my first phone call within five minutes. So people wanted it immediately, what they were using it. And finally, there's a purpose for the business community, too. Uh, they can use it in their planning process. Where should I locate a new business? What are the demographics of that location? How many households are within a couple miles of my business? What is the age demographic of those businesses? Are, am I near 
retirement community, my year, near younger people, what does that mean for my business? So it also has an important function for uh, the private sector as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. First, we'll look at population growth. All right, we're going back 50 years. <coughs> and this is going to be interactive with questions, so no one's going to be allowed to fall asleep. Uh, how many of you were in the area in 1960? Okay. 1960, when you see Hickory MSA, that's the Unifor County, so we're talking Alexander, Burke, Caldwell, and Catawba. So when you see Hickory and they say that's what it means. But in 1960, we had fewer than 200,000 residents in the four county area. And you can kind of see how it stair steps through time. So 60 to 70, we gained about 38,000. 70s, 227 to 270. So another pretty good decade of growth. 1980s, 270 to 292. And we only gained about 22,000. Of course, we had a couple of economic recessions during the, particularly the early 1980s, that didn't Look at the 1990s, 292 to 342. So that's about 50,000. How many of you were here during the 1990s? What was going on in this area during the 1990s? Fiber optics. Fiber optics, job growth. Look at 2000 to 2010, 342 to 365. That's much, much slower. What would be the biggest reason for the slowdown in population growth? Loss of jobs. Loss of jobs. That's right. That's, that's the main way that our area grows if you, if you look at the last 50 years. So with the job losses that we've had, and since 2000 we've lost about 47,000 jobs in the four county area, so that's about one in four jobs. That has definitely had an impact on population growth. Now it's not zero, you know, so we didn't lose 25% of our population either, but it definitely had an impact on slowing that growth rate down. All right, this is a look county by county. We'll talk about that a little bit. Uh, who had the fastest growth? Alexander County, 10%. That's about 1% a year. Now, they're much smaller, of course, so they don't have to have as many people to, to grow in terms of percentage. Generally, if you're looking at an area, you, you want your minimum growth rate to be around 1%, so they barely exceeded that. Catawba County, 9%, so it's just a little bit under the 1%, 141 to 154,000. I would contend that most of that growth occurred between 2000 and 2007 or so. Of course, the census is a 10-year snapshot, so it doesn't say you had so much in one year versus so much in 09. But I feel pretty sure looking at some other indicators that we'll talk about later, most of that was in the first six or seven years of the decade. Uh, look at Burke County. That's only 2%. 89,000 to 90,912. That's very, very little. We thought for a long time that they would actually end up negative, that they would show negative population growth. And if you probably looked at the last three years, if we had that data, you would see a population loss for Burke County. That's clearly related to job losses. And at least some of those people have moved to seek work elsewhere. And we're going to talk a little bit about who we think that is, because that's, that's important to keep in mind as we look forward. Uh, Caldwell, again, that's 6.8%. That's pretty slow. We thought they might end up around zero, so they did a little bit better than that. But none of these numbers are they're not very fast. You look at the area. 6.8%, that's really, really slow, particularly if you look at the last four decades. It's probably the slowest growth that the area's had since World War II. All right, percentage population growth by decade. And the blue bar on the chart is the 1990s, and the red bar is 2000 to 2010. Look at Raleigh. 
look at that. It went, even with all the issues with the economy, over 40% growth 2000 to 2010. Why did Raleigh grow so much? Government what? and universities. Government and, and universities. universities. RTP? Yeah. Technology? Technology. Um, state government? Those were all factors. Uh, 40%, that is a huge growth rate. I mean, we're talking more than 4% a year. That's really, really fast. Uh, look at Wilmington, above 30% in the last decade. Talk about Wilmington a little bit. What's going on there? You have the ports. Ports. International trade related to ports, and you have the university also down there. You have governmental work associated with marine biology. UNCW, right. Uh, the other part would be tourism. You've got the beaches down there. And you had uh, retirees moved there. Okay, uh, how about Charlotte? Charlotte's just a little under 30. Banking. Banking. Banking, finance, again, uh, university influence with UNC Charlotte going on there. If you look at our area, you can see in the 1990s we grew a little more than 15% and that rate was reduced to 6.8%. And comparing ourselves to the other areas, that's about where Rocky Mount was. So we were the second slowest behind Rocky Mount. Besides looking at the whole area, I wanted to include, of course I like a couple maps, I'm a geographer, so we have to throw in a couple maps. But I wanted to talk a little bit about what's going on within the area. And what you see on this map, and hopefully everybody can see the numbers, but red areas of course are declines and the green areas are increases. So let's talk about the increases first. Look what's going on down here. This is 63%, and this is 33% down in here. Yes. <laughs> That's huge. That's huge. Uh, the Cheryl Sward area in Catawba County has definitely been the fastest growing area over the past 10 years in the region. Why is that? Easier Wait. routes to Charlotte, for sure, with the new 16. It's closer to Charlotte. So you could easier commute to work, live up here and work down there. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and we've definitely seen that. You've also had some retirees that have moved in that area too. Uh, so down here, you, know, you can be in Morrisville, 15 minutes. Of course, the new 16 has just opened up. Who's been on the new 16? It's going to make it a lot faster to get from Catawba County to Charlotte. You get off 150, you can be uptown Charlotte 30 minutes or less. That's going to make a difference. So if we took out the crystal ball and we looked what it would be in the 2020 census, that area should be the fastest growing area. And assuming that Charlotte recovers quicker than we do, that'll also help that area as well. Because you're going to get some people that'll move in, they don't want to necessarily live in Mecklenburg County, but they, they want to live a little bit outside the city and drive in. 